So, what's going on with all the news about the sun? Some say that the sun is getting angry. Well, what does that mean exactly, and should we be concerned? Frankly, yes, we should be concerned. It's generally not a good thing to get too much sunshine. The ultraviolet component of sunlight is harmful to the skin. That's why humans have adapted a spectrum of skin pigmentation. The more sunlight there is to protect ourselves against, the more pigmentation we need. Big floppy hats and, of course, bottles of high SPF oil-free sunscreen help too, especially for fair-skinned people. But what is planet Earth going to do? First, let's get a good estimate of just how angry the sun is likely to get. The sun usually goes through an active-calm-active cycle every 22 years, with highs and lows occurring every 11 years. Why that happens, no one knows, it just does. There's probably a reason, but scientists haven't figured it out yet. They do know that, with each cycle, the sun reverses its magnetic poles. That in itself is pretty astounding, especially when you consider that Earth hasn't reversed its magnetic poles in the last 600,000 years. Lately, the sun has been extremely calm, the calmest it's been in over a hundred years, in fact. That's unusual, too. The active-calm-active cycle has turned into an active-calm-calm cycle. But that's changing, and it's why we are notifying brightsiders about what to expect in the coming few years. The terms calm or active or angry refer to the amount of high-energy radiation that the sun gives off. Thankfully, the amount of visible light the sun gives off doesn't change very much. That would be a serious problem. If the sun were to get just 6% dimmer or brighter, the Earth would either freeze or fry. Observing sunspots is the easiest way to measure how active the sun is. The more sunspots that are visible, the more active the sun is. A graph, known as the butterfly diagram, tracks the 11-year period of sunspot activity. The butterfly diagram shows how sunspots disappear regularly from the surface of the sun and reappear regularly in other locations. NASA predicted that the present cycle of solar activity would be calm, like the previous one. But it's starting to look like that is not the case. Presently, we are in solar cycle number 25. That's the 25th 11-year solar cycle since 1755, when record-keeping began. This cycle of solar activity is expected to peak in 2025. The sun has already exceeded the number of sunspots NASA had predicted. So, it doesn't look like this solar cycle is going to be a calm one. It looks like we are going to have some very active sun-blasting radiation on Earth for the next several years. In early February 2022, 40 out of 49 SpaceX communication satellites in orbit above the atmosphere were destroyed by an explosion on the sun. High-speed electromagnetic plasma gas from the sun, known as solar wind, caused the Earth's atmosphere to compress and Elon Musk's satellites lost their orbital integrity and crashed back into Earth. Sunspots look like dark spots on the sun, but they aren't dark. They're just not as bright as the surface of the sun. To get a better idea, take a lit 25-watt light bulb and hold it in front of a lit 100-watt light bulb. The 25-watt light bulb will appear dark. That's the same way it is with sunspots. Sunspots on the surface of the sun almost always come in pairs. This is because sunspots are magnetic storms in the plasma gas of the sun. One sunspot will be magnetic positive, and the other sunspot will be magnetic negative. Between the two sunspots, which can be many times bigger than the Earth itself, there flows an electric current that carries a fiery arc of ionized gas with it. Solar flares are something else we should be concerned about. They are powerful electromagnetic explosions on the sun associated with sunspots. As the superhot plasma gas on the sun churns and twists, it also twists the magnetic field lines in the sunspots. When these lines snap, a powerful explosion releases X-ray and gamma radiation at the speed of light. Visible gases are also released. Solar flares have a classification system, according to how powerful they are. X-class solar flares are the most dangerous. This type of solar flare can cause radio blackouts across Earth and harm satellites, astronauts in orbit, and even passengers on high-altitude airplanes. M-class solar flares cause spectacular aurora at the North and South Pole areas on Earth, while C-class solar flares have almost no effect on Earth. But solar flares are not the biggest explosions on the sun. 
CME stands for coronal mass ejection, and these are much more massive than solar flares and more dangerous when they're headed our way. As the name indicates, coronal mass ejections are explosions that originate on the sun's corona. They hurl millions of tons of hot ionized gases outward from the corona. The word corona is derived from the Latin word for crown, and it's the layer of thin bright gas around the sun's surface. The corona of the sun is much hotter than the surface of the sun. The surface itself is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but the corona is somewhere between 1 to 2 million degrees. The why and how the corona is so much hotter than the surface of the sun is another major mystery that scientists have yet to completely work out. A recent theory claims the corona is heated by sound waves and the sun's nuclear reactions make a lot of noise. Project GONG, which stands for Global Oscillation Networking Group, was set up on Earth to monitor the sound waves on the sun. Cool, huh? Turns out, the sun is ringing, or oscillating, like a bell. And we have five observation sites across the globe. One in India, Australia, one in the Canary Islands, one in Chile, and one in California. They keep a constant watch over the 10 million sound waves moving on and around the sun. Now that the sun is entering an active phase, we can expect to see more powerful CMEs heading our way. The gases expelled by the sun are ionized and stripped of electrons by the intense heat. This causes them to form a proton storm that can travel through space at speeds of around 500 miles per second. These positively charged atomic nuclei will mostly be blocked or deflected by the magnetic field that extends around Earth. Our atmosphere is no help against a proton storm, although the last mile of air above the surface of the Earth stops the harmful X-rays from solar flares. The particle wind from the Sun can only be stopped by Earth's magnetosphere. We can look forward to some spectacular aurora around Earth's magnetic poles, and it's very possible that these aurora will extend down to the mid-latitudes when the Earth is moving through a coronal mass ejection. Currently, the United States has a space probe headed for the solar corona. Because the corona of the Sun extends outward for many millions of miles, the Parker Solar Probe, as it's called, is cruising 3.8 million miles from the surface of our star, or about one-tenth the distance to Mercury. The probe is experiencing temperatures of 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, but it is also kept at perfect room temperature. A 4.5-inch thick carbon composite heat shield protects the telescopes and magnetometers in the probe that measure the intensity of the solar wind. The five antennae that protrude into the coronal gases are made of a niobium alloy, which can withstand the extreme temperatures of the corona. The recent double-calm cycle of the Sun is a bit concerning when trying to predict how active the Sun will get this cycle. The sunspots completely disappeared for a long time from the entire surface of the Sun. It is as if the magnetic distortions we usually see on the photosphere of the Sun had collapsed into its interior. Intense magnetism is coming to the surface now and breaking through into the corona. The National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, is predicting that this solar cycle, cycle number 25, will be one of the strongest ever. The last solar cycle was very calm, with a sunspot count of only 116. The average is 170. But the prediction for this cycle is between 210 and 260 sunspots, which would be one of the strongest cycles ever. We stand to lose more satellites to a stronger solar wind. We can also expect electric grid overloads as the proton storm peaks in 2025. That means we should expect an interruption to our internet services as positively charged protons get into the wires, run into the transformers, and overload them. On March 12, 1989, a powerful CME hit Earth and created absolute havoc with our power grids. Will we experience anything of this magnitude in the near future? Well, stay sharp, Brightsiders! <laughs>